Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to another installment of the Let's Read series. Today we're going to be reading uh, a new book. We're going to start a new book called The Franklin Cover-Up, Child Abuse, Satanism, and Murder in Nebraska by John W. D. Camp. And for some context regarding the author, uh, John W. D. Camp uh, was a controversial Republican politician from the state of Nebraska uh, who served in the, in the Nebraska legislature from 1971 until 1987. Uh, he served as an infantry officer in the United States Army during the Vietnam War. In 1975, he initiated Operation Baby Lift, which excavated, uh, uh, I'm sorry, evacuated 2,800 orphaned uh, Vietnamese children. In 1992, DeCamp wrote a mass market paperback book titled, which this is what we're going to be getting into here, uh, The Franklin Cover-Up in which uh, he alleged the existence of a uh, Franklin child prostitution ring, which involved murder and Satanism. So before we jump into the actual book that I have in my hands here, this is, and I'm basing this on the couple of days that I have um, flipped through this book and have read random sections from the different chapters. Um, this is the most disturbing, stomach-turning, morally repulsive work that I've ever had the uh, <laughs> displeasure of of holding in my hands. Um, and yet it's also an extremely, extremely uh, informative and insightful work as well, because these are um, important topics and subjects that for the most part fly under the radar, except only when very occasionally um, scandals like the Epstein um instance makes front you know front page news all you know nationally and internationally and then all of a sudden everybody wants to um wants to pay attention and start asking questions and doing some digging when that's what they should have been doing all along especially because all of this stuff involves children 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 and prepubescent teens and and kids, little kids. Yeah. People never cease to amaze me. Their ignorance is astounding. And so is their cowardice. Anywho. Let's start reading this. Let's, let's see what Mr. DeCamp has uh, uncovered here. Forward. What do Ronald Reagan, President George Bush, former CIA Director William E. Colby, Democratic presidential candidate Bob Kerry, billionaire and second richest man in America, and now head of Solomon Brothers, Warren Buffett, and Ronald Roskins, the current administrator of the Agency for International Development, all have in common? I asked my close friend and advisor, William Colby, one day in 1991. I give up, former head of the Central Intelligence Agency, Colby said. What could that group have in common? Three things, I replied. All of them a burden at times for those who have to carry them. The three things are me, John DeCamp, a case called Franklin, and a man named Larry King. Are you serious? Colby asked. 
dead serious, I responded. And I hope that word dead does not turn out to be a prophetic pronouncement, as it has for at least 15 other Franklin-related personalities. My statement to Bill Colby was not made lightly. Colby and his wife, Sally Shelton Colby, Colby, a United States ambassador uh, under President Jimmy Carter, were at the very moment uh, warning me to get away from the Franklin child abuse investigation. Larry King and anybody else linked with Franklin as quickly as possible for the sake of my own life and safety. Sally and Bill uh, had never talked to me like this before. They sat me down and made it clear that this was not one of our routine discussions about life and health and happiness and emphasized to me the serious nature of what of what and whom I was dealing with. What you have to understand, John, is that sometimes there are forces and events too big, too powerful, with so much at stake for other people or institutions that you cannot do anything about them. No matter how evil or wrong they are, and no matter how dedicated or sincere you are, or how much evidence you have. That is simply one of the hard facts of life you have to face. You have done your part. You have tried to expose the evil and wrongdoing. It has hurt you terribly, but it has not killed you up until this point. So I am telling you, get out of this before it does. Sometimes things are just too big for us to deal with, and we have to step aside and let history take its course. For you, John, this is one of those times, Bill warned, with Sally nodding her head in affirmation. When a caution of this nature comes from someone of the stature and experience of Bill or Sally Colby, you have to take it seriously, even if you do not want to. I had already had warnings enough that... uh, Unless I backed off from the Franklin situation, I might be looking at life from a pine box six feet underground. Bill Colby uh, had ample reason to know the seriousness of the Franklin case. In secret, Colby had been hired a few months earlier by the Nebraska Legislature's Investigative Committee to look into the single-engine plane crash in which the Senate's private investigator, Gary, Gary Caradori, yeah, Gary Caradori and his son were killed. But Bill, I argued, somebody has to do something. The problem here is that our institutions of government have been corrupted. If there is a cover up, and I now absolutely believe that there is, even though originally I thought this whole Franklin story uh, had to be a fantasy then that cover-up can only take place with the, corrupt, with, the, with the cooperation and even the active assistance of some of our key institutions of government, from the courts to the cops, from the highest politicians to the media representatives, to the wealthiest business leaders of our community and country. I can't believe what you are telling me, Bill. Are you saying I should just lie it down and walk away from this when I, when I know kids are being abused and killed, when I know our most respected citizens and business leaders are up to their uh, eyebrows and drug dealing and and off an official corruption. uh, When every bone in my body tells me that evil is triumphing and everybody who is anybody is scared, beanless to do anything about it for fear of one thing or another. How can any honest or intelligent person do this? If I, or someone like me, do not keep pursuing this, then who will? And if we quit now, then when, if ever, will the truth come out and something be done about this evil and this corruption? Bill could tell I was excited, frustrated, and almost angry. Relax, just take a moment, John. He said, relax, and I will tell you my own personal story. Maybe it will have some, maybe it will have a message for you.
Last night, I returned from Russia, Bill began. <clears throat> Our conversation was taking place shortly before the now infamous August 19th, 1991 coup attempt to throw out uh, Gorbachev and the subsequent collapse of the Soviet Union uh, as it had existed since 1917. Why was I in Russia? Bill explained. Uh, for meetings in Moscow to try to work with other world leaders and Russian leaders privately and quietly so that when and if a transition of power and a change of government and, and economic policy occur in Russia, they occur in such a way that it avoids a war. I was staying at a hotel located near, right near Red Square, which, as you know, is the most guarded uh, sacred spot in the Soviet Union. It was about one in the morning. I could not sleep. The next morning, I was to return to the United States. Not being able to sleep, I thought I would see if it was possible to walk around and get some exercise. I walked out of my room, expecting to be stopped by the guards or secret police. But nobody paid attention to me in the hallway. I walked on down into the hotel lobby. Nobody seemed to care. So I walked out the door of the hotel directly onto uh, Red Square. Nobody paid attention. I stopped by Lenin's tomb. I stood a few feet away from the entrance to the Kremlin. Then it struck me like a ton of bricks. It was over. Here was the head of the CIA, once hated and feared by the Soviet Union, wandering unwatched and unguarded around Red Square after spending the previous week meeting with their leaders, trying to help them save themselves from economic collapse and political revolution which might turn into a new totalitarian dictatorship. And nobody cared. The guards did not care who I was or what I was doing. The system had collapsed. It was over. Communism was dead. Excuse me. That was the happy part. Bill went on, quietly. But I also realized that this walk in Red Square was going to be the only victory parade I would have to celebrate my 40-year battle for this. There were not going to be any parades down Madison Avenue with the ticker tape. This walk in Red Square was the only victory parade I was going to have. So what's the message, I asked. What are you trying to tell me? Sometimes, Bill said, there are forces too powerful for us to whip them individually in the same, in the time frame that we would have, that we would like. We have to keep working at our goal, but we have to be sensible enough not to risk everything and get ourselves destroyed or killed in the process. That victory we seek may take much longer than we want it and come in ways we never anticipated. Maybe, just maybe, you have to have your own private victory parade. You maybe have to face the fact that you cannot right all the unrightable wrongs in the world. That there really are people too powerful, interests too big. That the rich and the powerful, even when doing evil, can and will succeed, and you can do nothing about it at that moment. But, Bill continued, you do the possible recognize the impossible and if you are right and you are and we both know it there will be a time when victory will come and the good will triumph over the evil only the when and where and how are usually unknown to us the best we might be able to do sometimes is point out the truth and then step aside that is where i think you are now for your own safety and survival Please step aside. Maybe I should start carrying a gun, I suggested. Bill gave a cynical laugh and said, No, that will only likely get you killed. If you are going if they are going to get you, a gun you are carrying is not going to stop anything. The best you can do for your personal safety is to tell your story and make sure you have the national press. Uh, interested in this and looking into it with some really good investigative reporters. Huh, I muttered. Maybe the simplest thing for me to do is to try to tell the story. Maybe it is, Bill said. 
Besides, I myself want to fully understand what you said at the beginning about what all those prominent individuals from President Bush to Bob Carey, from myself to billionaire Warren Buffett have in common. Maybe I'll have to write a book and tell you, won't I, Bill? Well, here it is. Part one. Introduction. On June 21st, 1991, 21-year-old Alicia John Owen was pronounced guilty by a jury in Douglas County, Nebraska, on eight counts of felony perjury. On August 8th, 1991, she was sentenced to serve nine to 27 years in prison. Owen was indicted for telling a grand jury, before which she testified in 1990, that she was sexually abused as a juvenile by a Nebraska district court judge, by the chief of police of the city of Omaha, by the manager of the Franklin Community Federal Credit Union, and others. Excuse me. Alicia Owen also witnessed she said, the abuse of other children by figures in Nebraska's political and financial establishment, whom she named, among them the publisher of the state's largest newspaper, the Omaha World Herald. She testified that she was in a group of Nebraska children who functioned for years as illegal drug cour uh, couriers, traveling nationwide for some of Nebraska's wealthiest, most powerful and prominent businessmen. Two grand juries, one local and one federal, had a mandate to consider these and other charges of child abuse connected with the Franklin Credit Union. They indicted the victim. Uh, they indicted the victim witnesses for perjury instead. Let me read that one more time, just so that sinks in. They indicted the victim witnesses for perjury instead. This is unprecedented, probably in the history of the United States, commented jo uh, Dr. Judianne Denson Gerber, a lawyer, a psychiatrist, and nationally prominent specialist on child abuse during her visit to Nebraska in December of 1990. If the children are not telling the truth, particularly if they have been abused, they need help, medical attention. You don't throw them in jail. Both grand juries admitted that Alicia Owen and Paul Bonacci, whose testimony extensively corrobor corroborated Owens, had been badly abused. But this was done, they concluded, by persons other than those the young people named. Bonacci, too, was indicted for perjury. Two other victim witnesses, whose stories betressed those of Owen and Bonacci, recanted under immense pressure. Alicia Owen and Paul Bonacci refused to recant. America is suffering an epidemic of child abuse. SOS America a 1990 report from the Washington, D.C.-based Children's Defense Fund, or the CDF, said that a, quote, a survey by the American Association for, protect for Protecting Children indicates that 2.2 million children were reported abused, neglected, or both in 1987, a 225% increase since 1976, and a 48% increase in the previous five years. CDF and other estimates caution, however, that only one in every five cases of abuse and neglect gets reported. The dimensions of the abuse are staggering. Dr. A. Nicholas Groth, the director of the Sex Offender Program at the Connecticut Correctional Institute, told the New York Times in 1990, If we saw these same numbers of children 
suddenly developing some kind of illness, we'd think we have a made we we would think we had a major epidemic on our hands. Shocking as the numbers are, the nature of the crimes is more so. Even more frequently, abuse involves what law enforcement officials refer to as quote sadistic ritualistic features or to speak plainly satanism what the victims of this type of abuse describe is so horrific that parents teachers and even child welfare workers have great difficulty to grasp what they are being told the mind recoils from such evil inflicted on the most innocent of all people children in recent months, news media around the country have been full of propaganda to the effect that children who report abuse are just telling what they fantasized, or stories fed to them by adults. As for satanic or ritualistic abuse, many newspapers declare that it does not even exist, as the New York Village Voice did in a June 1990 article, which attacked, quote, the great ritualistic abuse hoax fucking disgusting oh man <clears throat> a banner headline story in the Chicago Tribune of May 17th 1991 quote a chilling tale of child abuse no one can prove gave typical coverage of the debate over whether or not children are being abused by satanists all nine children tell the same story a grisly tale of being taken out of school and abused in a blue house. They name the same culprit, a school administrator who performs satanic rituals as part of his twisted routine. In the 14 months since the first child came forward, police said they have conducted 150 interviews and cannot substantiate the claims of the children who range in age from five to nine. Prosecutor Stanley Levko is more blunt. He doesn't believe them, and he plans to publicly clear the accused. What a fucking scumbag. I, it's it's going to be really hard for me. This is not part of the read, but it's going to be incredibly difficult for me to not interject with my own personal commentary every now and then, because this shit is something that I'm personally very passionate about, and uh, it hits very close to home for me. Um for a number of reasons and I can't help but to get really fucking frustrated about it. This will do it. This will fucking do it for me. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. <clears throat> but the children's enraged parents do believe them. And a once skeptical psychologist also thinks they are telling the truth. All agree. The children have been traumatized. The problem is no one can prove how. In all these cases, I don't know of a single shred of credible, corroborating evidence, Levko said. The stories of the, Evans, of the Evansville children reflect a recent bizarre trend in child abuse cases across the, co the country. As more children are encouraged to step forward and expose adults who hurt them, police are encountering more cases of child abuse accompanied by allegations of occult rituals. The Tribune cited Kenneth Lanning, the Federal Bureau of Investigations expert on occult crime, on the uh, virtual non-existence of ritualistic abuse. Lanning, who was publicized, who has publicized his opinion that quote more people have been killed in the name of Jesus and Mohammed than in the name of Satan end quote, said on this occasion that there had been that there had quote been only one criminal conviction stemming from charges of satanic ritual abuse in the United States, end quote. On April 28th, 1991, the Omaha World Herald uh, carried a story along these lines titled Satanism, Lots of Talk, Little Proof. It said that the problem was not an epidemic of satanic abuse, but rather, authorities say, America is witnessing an epidemic of concern over Satan, over Satan and his minions, especially among adherents of fundamentalist Christianity. So-called ritual abuse is only part of it. But, but are these stories of incest and human sacrifice true? 
Many mental health experts think not. And at least two law enforcement officers with the FBI and the San Francisco police say they have looked into some of the claims and found nothing. Emphasis added. An embattled minority of law enforcement officials disagrees with the landing of the FBI. Good. Ted Gunderson, a 28-year uh, FBI veteran, former special agent in charge of the Bureau's Los Angeles Field Division, uh, speaks from his personal knowledge of one of the most infam infamous recent cases involving ritual abuse, involving ritual abuse, the McMartin Preschool case in California. After a 33-month trial, and despite uh, voluminous, voluminous evidence against them, School operators Peggy McMartin Bucky, Peggy McMartin Bucky, B U C K E Y, and her son, Raymond Bucky, were exonerated in January 1990 on 52 counts of molesting the children in their care, while the jury failed to reach a verdict on 13 other counts against Raymond Bucky. In a May 25th, 1990 interview with executive executive intelligence review gunderson said quote in the mcmartin case for example before any criminal charges were filed against anyone 460 complaints were filed with the manhattan beach the manhattan beach police are we to believe that 460 families fed their children the same story of ritualistic sexual abuse animal sacrifices etc he stressed that the crimes were reported in an, affluent, in an affluent suburban area where residents are typically skeptical about organized child abuse or satanic conspiracies. Gunderson commented on the effect of Lanning's disclaimers, quote, in my opinion, other than Satanists active in the United States in the uh, 20th century, Aleister Crowley, Anton LaVey, and Michael Aquino, Ken Lanning is probably the most effective and foremost speaker for the satanic movement in this country today or any time in the past. Yeah, by the way, quick side note here. Look up those men that were just named. Um, Alistair Crowley, Anton LaVey, and Michael Aquino. Aquino was, um, I forget what his position was exactly, but it was a fairly high rank in the United States military for some time. And he broke off from... <laughs> he broke off from LeVay's uh, Church of Satan and created, uh, I forget the name, but he created his own little subsection, his own little church, and they started doing their own shady shit there. But yeah, look into that. Look into that for sure. That's important. All of this information is important. Evidence from Gunderson's investigations has convinced that convinced him that tens of thousands of children or young children disappear from their homes each year and that many are ritualistic are ritually sacrificed a decade ago one estimate printed in reader's digest in july of 1982 was that quote approximately 100,000 children are unaccounted for each year that number sounds too high but nobody knows what the true figure is because the FBI does not keep count. Gunderson observes, the FBI, uh, quote, the FBI has an accurate count of the number of automobiles stolen every year. It knows the number of homicides, rapes, and robberies, but the FBI has no idea of the number of children who disappear every year. They simply do not ask for the statistics. Every month, every major police department in the United States files its uniform crime statistics with the FBI. It would be simple for the Bureau to add one more column to the, to the statistics and get a breakdown of every reported case of missing children, not to even mention children who are kidnapped for ritualistic purposes and, in some cases, murdered. I am convinced that the FBI does not ask for these statistics because they do not want to see them. They would be confronted with an instant public outcry for action because the figures would show a major social problem. That problem would demand action. 
<clears throat> the Franklin Credit Union scandal, um, centered in Omaha, opens a window into the hideous world of child abuse and of organized illegal drug peddling, patronized and protected by powerful figures in politics and business. National media interest in the case flickered in 1988 when the Franklin Community Federal Credit Union was raided by federal agencies and shut down. Franklin's manager was uh, Lawrence E. King Jr., then age 44, a rising star in state and national uh, Republican circles and officer of the National Black Republican Council. King sang the national anthem at the GOP national conventions in 1984 and 1988. Nearly $40 million was missing from the, from the coffers of the small, uh, ostensibly community-oriented credit union. Uh, the financial scandal turned into something more when it became known that children from Omaha and its surroundings said they had been flown from city to city to be abused at parties held by Franklin's officers and well-known Nebraskans, including nationally prominent Republican Party activists, in, sorry, including national prom, nationally prominent Republican Party activists. Quote, a lurid, mysterious scandal began... Huh? Oh, okay. My apologies. A lurid, mysterious scandal begins taking shape in Omaha, headlined the New York Times. Three years later, people living outside eastern Nebraska are unlikely to be aware of the Franklin scandal, and those in the region have been told that the case is closed. Larry King is serving his jail term for misappropriation of funds after a guilty plea. Law enforcement at the local, state, and federal levels said there was no evidence of drug peddling, organized child abuse, or satanic activity by King. The allegations of child abuse were, quote, a carefully crafted hoax, according to one of the two grand juries that examined the affair. A chief witness, Owen, stands convicted of perjury. The day after Alicia Owen's conviction... 3,000 Nebraskans responded to a local radio station's poll. 94% of them said they believed that she had been railroaded and that there was a cover-up. What the public suspects, the careful investigator of the Franklin case confronts face-to-face. -face. This case is far from closed. This book will explore the substance of the Franklin case, much of which has uh, never been revealed to the public until now. That means evidence concerning key players, which apparently was never brought before or was ignored by the grand juries. It means evidence gathered for the Nebraska legislature's special committee on the Franklin case, which found and verified the tracks of criminal activity where law enforcement uh, purported to see none. The, legisla the legislative investigation which began in November of 1988, ended on January 9th, 1991, when a new legislature uh, was sworn into office and the investigative committee authorized by the previous legislature uh, was automatically terminated as required by the state constitution. The legislature had the option to renew the investigation, but chose to not. Many members knew or suspected what the stakes were and were terrified. I write about the unfolding of the Franklin case, its exposure, and its cover-up as not only an eyewitness, but a participant in these events. I knew how high Larry King's reach went. I was sitting in the front now. Sorry. Um, I knew how high Larry King's reach went. I was sitting in the front row, just 15 feet from the main podium at, at the 1984-1988 Republican National Conventions, duly elected by the people of the state of Nebraska as a delegate, pledged in the first instance to Ronald Reagan and, in 1988, to George Bush. I was there as the story of the Franklin Credit Union and the child abuse broke in Nebraska. I wrote the, quote, DeCamp De Memo in 1990, 
which marked a new phase of the case. I will describe events in which I personally was involved. Most of these have never been made public, and it has pained me tremendously at times. When I knew that the Omaha World Herald was saying something false or distorting a fact, that I had no forum or no legal right to respond because I had to protect a client or honor a legal privilege. One moment. Somebody was spamming in my Discord server, and that was that was throwing me off. My apologies. As an attorney, for furthermore, I have some special some specialization in cases of allegations by youngsters against adults in the area of child abuse. It has been my policy and belief, as it is now, that there is nothing worse than child abuse. I I wholeheartedly fucking agree. With the possible exception of falsely accusing people of child abuse. Just in the past year, I have overturned two felony charges against individuals in rural Nebraska who were charged with abusing their daughters based on allegations from the daughters. I was convinced the girls were not telling the truth. I successfully proved this in both cases, and the girls broke down and told the whole story as to why they had lied. In addition, I am the lawyer uh, for the National... Uh, Child Abuse Defense and Resource Center of Nebraska, which fights against false ac- false accusations of child abuse and is made up of adults who have been falsely accused of child abuse. By contrast, with these cases of fantasy, I can say without reservation that in one Franklin-related instance after another, there was sufficient evidence and cooperation available for anyone seeking it to back up the victim's claims. My own recollections and considerate and considered judgments are just a uh, fraction of the huge record of the Franklin case. The files of the legislature's main investigator, the late Gary Caridori, uh, testified to the mass of leads law and my apologies. Testify to the mass of leads law enforcement would not pursue. Documentary evidence presented in this book, never before made public, makes it possible to contrast the assurances of local and state officials that there was little or no Franklin-related abuse with what these with what those agencies had in their own files. The chapters of this book dealing with Franklin are based, apart from my direct experience, strictly on documents available and documented and documented facts. I do not claim to know the accuracy or veracity of every single statement made by every every witness or other person recorded in these documents. I do claim, however, that the statements and the evidence were officially presented exactly as described. Readers can draw their own conclusions as to what is or is not believable. I have been very careful to present only material and documents which I can legally and properly, in my opinion, make available. I also must state uh, that I received none of the Franklin Committee uh, documentation from the committee's chairman, Senator Lauren Schmidt, other than what I was uh, entitled to as attorney for Paul Bonacci. Some people inevitably will claim, as they did when I issued the DeCamp memo in January of 1990, that Senator Schmidt, whose uh, private attorney I am, quote, leaked everything to me. I said then, and I still say now, that nothing could be further from the truth. Neither is anything whatsoever from grand jury documents, some of which I had access to, presented here because I am not allowed to disclose this information. I wish I could. I wish everything about Franklin could be made public. Then the public could judge even more thoroughly about what is true and what is false. I believe that uh, that sunshine and exposure of all facts uh, from all agencies that have information about Franklin would establish the truth of the stories of drug abuse, child abuse, pedophilia, abuse of positions of public trust, cover up by institutions of government, and most tragic, involvement in this conduct and later cover up by some of our most respected 
and wealthiest citizens. I believe that the record must get uh, must get out into the open to the extent possible, and that the public has to uh, share the information. Otherwise, truth becomes whatever those who control the institutions of government and the press say it is. Benjamin Franklin said, quote, whoever would overthrow the liberty of a nation must begin by subduing the freeness of speech. For a textbook example of how this can be done, I would say, come to Nebraska. Watch how uh, when you totally control the press, when you own the press, you can make truth be whatever you want. You can make villains out to be heroes, sinners out to be saints, and vice versa. In this book, therefore, much of the material has been kept in its documentary form. The words of investigators, state senators, uh, victim witnesses, parents, police, or FBI, as recorded in police documents, uh, eyewitness reports, testimony to the legislature, published interviews, and so on. I will allow these documents to speak for themselves. Spelling and punctuation have been left as uh, spelling and punctuation has been left as they appear in the documents, except for minor punctuation changes in transcripts. Uh, interpolations and quoted material are denoted by brackets. When the name of a victim or other person is uh, not his or her real name, it is marked with an asterisk. Uh, the first time it appears. The Franklin case, uh, which has dominated political life in Nebraska for three years, has chilling implications for the whole United States. The unfinished business of the Franklin investigation is a matter not only of justice for children in one state, but of the lives of untold numbers of children everywhere. Evidence developed from Franklin and King's activities leads into drug trafficking, money laundering, pornography, uh, child prostitution, and the kidnapping and sale of children in different parts of the United States and abroad. The shocking treatment of Alicia Owen and Paul Bonacci by the courts in Nebraska is one giveaway of what a high of what a high stake has been waged on suppressing the Franklin scandal. Members of the state Senate and investigators who sought to discover the truth of the matter found that out earlier on in a personal violent manner. Okay, so that is going to conclude um, our reading of the Franklin cover-up by John W. DeCamp today. And we will pick it back up, part two or chapter two, um, more than likely tomorrow or Sunday, either one, because I do want to start focusing more heavily on on this Let's Read series because I've found that even though I can say read a book or read a document, listen to an interview, watch a documentary, etc., and and learn about things, it you know I can explain them in my own way, within in my own words, and I can try to break things down as um, as coherently as possible so that other people can understand what I'm talking about. And like I always say in every video, uh, hopefully spread that information to others. Just reading straight from the book itself or from the document it's, itself and so on is, I, I think, a more um, efficient means of relaying the information. Because the, you know, the authors, they put so much time and energy and, and, and research into these matters that it's just, it, it, I think it comes across better. It, it's, it's, it's a more full, if you will, and, and complete and detailed telling of things. So I think it gets the message across, you know, much better that way. So that's why I read these books and that's why I do my best to, um, to get this knowledge out there and to raise at least some awareness, you know, some level of awareness in people about these things. That's the goal anyway. So, um, as per usual, I, I hope you all learned something from this from this video, and I hope that there was a positive takeaway from it. And if so, 
uh, you go ahead and you share you share that takeaway with with as many people as as possible. Um, this one is is very difficult for me personally. This is a really hard read because this is one of the topics, one of the subjects that I, I, I my skin crawls with with just pure unadulterated anger and frustration and and almost a bloodlust really. And, and my stomach fucking turns and I, I just I I get a really, really bad vile feeling that washes over me every single time I read about something like this or I just, you know, hear about something like this generally. It just it, it doesn't sit well with me. I do not fucking stand for the abuse or the neglect of children in any way, shape, or form by any fucking buddy. That is a line you do not cross. Not with me, and just not generally if you're fucking, you know, well in the head and you still have a conscience. So forgive me. Like I said, I, I, I can't help but to interject with some of my own personal commentary in between reading these chapters to you guys. Um, but I, I just can't help it. It's, it's disgusting. It's, it's, it's evil. It's, it's pure fucking evil. And I hate it. I can't fucking stand it. And if I had the power to stop all of this, immediately and bring every single fucking person dead or alive to justice and make them pay for their sins that they have committed against these children. I would. Oh, Oh, I would in a heartbeat. Make no mistake about that. Anywho, as always, uh, have a, beautiful, safe, and blessed uh, day, night, evening, uh, wherever you find yourselves in this topsy-turvy fucking crazy world of ours. All right. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Deuces.